everybody, it's Ashley. Welcome back to another installment of Lovely Layering with Ashley. Today we are going to take a look at how I used some different products to create this watercolor look on this not watercolored card. All of the elements that you see here are ink blending or die cuts, and I wanted to show you how I created that. So we're going to be using the Rose Flurries 3D dies today, and these are layering dies. I'm also going to be using the Gradient Cardstock Packs and some Distress Oxides to give that watercolor look. I'm going to be using lots of different colors that sort of coordinate with the cardstocks that I'll be using. And to blend them on, I'm going to be using the Ranger Foam Blenders because I feel that these work best with Distress Oxides. The first piece of cardstock I'm using is the lightest piece that comes in the Cherry Blossoms Gradient Set. And for the Distress Oxide that I am blending over top, I'm using Tattered Rose. Now in hindsight, I think I would have used a bit of a darker color Distress Oxide with this cardstock. It matches almost too well, and I don't get a lot of variation when I spray the water on, which you'll see in just a minute. But I'm just making sure to get a nice even layer because I want to make sure that this appears as if it were painted on. So there I go spraying that water on. Like I said, I'm using my Distress Sprayer. And the great thing about this Distress Sprayer is that if you pull the water trigger back a little slower, you'll get larger drops. And if you do it quickly or fast, you get um, some really fine mist. So you get to really play around with the type of look that you want when you're spraying this water on. To give it even more of a bit of a watercolored look, I'm going to be using some gouache. Now this is a really pigmented sort of like watercolor type paint, but if you have like kids acrylic white paint laying around, you can absolutely use that as well. And you don't have to add this step in, but I think adding that white splatter over top really just makes it look a little bit more authentic and watercolored. I like to add varying size of the drops and to get that variation in size you can just add more water. Adding more water will create larger droplets and less water will create finer droplets. So normally what I do is I create a nice layer of fine drops or splatter and then I'll add some extra water in there like you've seen just to add some larger drops. Sometimes the very small drops can sort of blend into the background, but it's really nice to have them if somebody gets really up close and wants to take a look at how you created a card. So this is what the end panel will look like. And what I was talking about before with the variation of color between the Distress Oxide and the cardstock, once I spray that water on, and you sort of pick it up with like a, a clean dry cloth, you get that variation of color. So you'll see the cardstock color underneath where those droplets have been dried up, just as if you would uh, if you were doing it on white cardstock and you spray the water. When you pick up the droplets of water, you can see the lighter cardstock underneath. All of that is to basically say if you choose a Distress Oxide color that is three shades darker than your colored cardstock, uh, you'll get a greater watercolor look impact when you spray the water, as opposed to if you choose a Distress Oxide that is pretty spot on or just like one shade off of your cardstock. So I wanted to show you how I'm creating my leaves. Most of the dyes in this set have leaves that are two layers. So I've chosen a lighter and darker green color from the Green Meadows Gradient Cardstock set. And I'm using Cracked Pistachio over the lighter cardstock. And again, that's pretty spot on there, the color. It's a couple shades darker, but pretty much the same. But for my darker green color of cardstock, I've decided to go with Peacock Feathers, which is a bluish green. Um, and you can see there that the difference between the front and the back is quite different. And I really love the way that that turned out. So we're now starting the die cutting. And as you can see, I removed that first layer, which is just a solid die cut. 
The reason that I did that is because I wanted to sort of save product and energy and the amount of the first layer that shows through when you're doing this second layer here, which is actually this one I'm showing you, is so small. So all those tiny little pieces that you see that are cut out are the only pieces that you will see through of that first layer. So I'm going to end up cutting some solid cardstock out of that later on and I'll show you when I do that. Um, but I just didn't think it was necessary to do all of the watercolor splatters and everything like that over the first layer since you see so little of it. Sometimes it's worth it just to save your manpower. <laughs> So I've got those three colors or three layers, sorry, that I've die cut out. And as I mentioned, I've, I'm omitting layer one right now. So this is two, three, and four. I'm putting a little bit of glue on the back of the cardstock or the die cut pieces and layering them together. And you can see that I get this really pretty watercolor flower look. And uh, none of it's really been watercolored. It's mostly ink blended and uh, sprayed on with some splatter but it really gives this really fun artsy look. And as you can see, I just showed you, you could absolutely add that first layer here. And I'm actually just going to show you that at the very end, I chose a very dark purple first layer just to make that pop. For my leaves, I'm just going to do the same process and cut these out of the cardstock. And then I'll use some glue on the back of the second layer just to make sure if I do it on the first layer, um, I may have some spots with the glue uh, showing through and that wouldn't be good. Um, so I went ahead and adhered the second layer to the first and now we have these really pretty images. And I just feel like they look so much like watercolor, especially with the um, different shades of colors that you can choose and the ink blending with the water splatter over top just really pushes it over the edge for me and I think that it's just beautiful. So now that I've die cut lots of uh, flowers and leaves, I'm going to work on my card front. Now I want to keep this pretty simple, but I want it to enhance the look of the, or the watercolor feel. So what I'm going to do is take this caramel toffee mini ink cube, and I'm going to use an ink blending brush and just blend from this top right center sort of, and I'm going to blend outward. So I want it to get lighter and lighter as it goes out. And this is one of my favorite techniques when I'm trying to do a watercolor look with ink blending. A lot of times if you've ever used watercolor, you know that if you put watercolor onto a wet cardstock, you get this nice sort of, uh, like flowing out feel and it gets lighter as it gets to the edges and I really wanted to accomplish that with my ink blending. So to add some splatters what I'm going to do is actually just take that caramel toffee uh, mini ink cube and smush it there right on my glass mat. I'm going to add some water to that and pick it up with a damp big uh, round brush, uh, paintbrush, and then I'm going to do some more splatters onto my card front. This is really going to keep that cohesion of the watercolor look. And then just to add a little bit more cohesion, I guess, I'm going to use some um, white gouache again. Again, this step is not uh, mandatory if you don't have gouache you can use acrylic paint or you could use nothing and uh, there's also a white ink spray that Altenew, um carries and it's wonderful for this and then you could see uh, right at the end there I just used some bronze metallic watercolor from the Altenew metallic watercolor pan set um, also you don't have to use this I just thought it would be nice to bring in a little bit of shine so to create a little bit of dimension, I'm gonna go ahead and glue my leaves onto my card front and use foam tape for my flowers. Once again, here is the final card. I really love the way that it came out and I think it really looks like a piece of art. I hope that you've enjoyed the video and gained some confidence in how you can create this for yourself. As always, links to all of the products are in the description. I hope that you will subscribe to see more inspiration from the Altenew team and I will see you again